Well, hello there, it's Ina here and welcome to my art room. So today I want to work with this clock. I bought it for just a couple of dollars at a garage sale and it has a very nice and fun finish and shape and so I don't want to do much to the outside. But what I really like about this clock is that it has a nice big space in the back. You can tell here after I open the door that this is a perfect opportunity to insert some kind of assemblage. And of course, it will be themed time. Now, first of all, I want to cover up the little mechanism so that when I'm all done, I can still reach the battery. And here are some of the things I will be using or might be using. There were some electrodes, there are some circuit boards, some have switches, there are some plastic toys, plastic packaging, and so on. Uh, this is another toys, some moving gears, and then stuff that is metal and from the handyman drawer, mostly just odds and ends. So again, a junk assemblage, and I will start with this little container. It's a toy, but it has this a round piece sticking out, which would make it rather unstable. So I add a little bit of water to it, uh, cause a little imprint and then I can cut it out and my little uh, yellow thing there is going to be in just the right position. Now this is of course my contribution to the full core art challenge for June. Later in the video I will show you the lineup of all the wonderful projects you created and then towards the end I will give you the new challenge for the month of July. Now, like always, I am using the E6000 to glue everything down. Here I have a little switchboard and a few metal pieces from an erector set and they will help me to give this some legs as I want to use it for some kind of a workspace. This of course needs to dry really well. Next I'm working with some pieces from a drywall set. I found this at a dollar store and I love this stuff. It has nice texture. You can cut it with scissors and as you can see here I cut a piece out to make it fit. Next I will use a piece of this toy with these movable gears and of course I always have to double check that everything fits and my door still closes. There were a lot of times here I had to wait for things to dry before I could go on. This is a, a circuit board and it has some switches and because it had a very unusual back with all these knobs I used texture paste to glue it down. Next, yeah, no idea what this is, looks like a knob of some kind, but it has a round bottom, which means it's really hard to uh, glue it down uh, without holding it the whole time. So I embed it with some texture paste into a bottle lid. Next, some odds and ends from the handyman drawer. Uh, these uh, metal pieces go kind of around the edge, around the corner, so they fit nicely on this uh, little box. Now from here on I will add all kinds of components and I try to show you the major ones or some of the main ideas. Like this one, it's made out of plastic so I think it's a toy and I gave it a little extension. For the next circuit boards I use my glue because they are much smoother on the back side and this one has some holes so I underlay some gears just for the looks and for the effect. Now I use these gears all through, you will see them uh, here and there. And then my little workspace, it fits nicely right there. And more little bits to bring more interest to those plastic gears. I also added the orange top and I am connecting the wires and just uh, adding uh, more things. Some of the ones I prepared earlier, lots of gears, some rings, another circuit board here and so on. Some of the pieces I had to prop up in order for them to dry in the right position. Actually throughout this whole project I had to often take a break because things had to dry. 
Now these are meat temperature gauges and I will cut off the sticks so I can use them for dials. I find them very cheaply at a thrift store and they work great but they again have a round back so I add a piece of plastic to give them a better surface. Next a pocket watch. This one has a glass missing uh, but I can turn the hands and it will go right there in my assemblage and yes the gears still turn. A little ladder up to the yellow compartment and here is a little update. So this is the way it looks so far and I will continue to add a few more things together with you like this bottle top that open and closes and then this metal piece of unknown origin. I have another piece from the Erector set. I have some more toy plastic bits and so on and then I finished it up and this is the way it looks now. The little box got a few more components, not too many, and I kept the sides free so it can go in and out easily. And then to those big uh, plastic gears, I added some smaller metal gears and nuts just for some extra texture. I added a lot of handyman bits to the back wall. I added some hooks, some beads, some odd shaped packaging here and there. Whatever fit best to fill in the empty spaces. Next to the ladder is another kids toy that has a movable part uh, underneath a packaging piece, another uh, metal piece from the erector set and then of course my watch with the movable hands. And then here on the lid you see that hair elastic I added earlier around the orange bit. I also took away those screws because they stopped the lid from closing properly and otherwise I added more washers and other metal bits. And now it's time for some black gesso. I will paint very carefully around the watch as I don't want to touch the hands. Otherwise everything will need two or three coats. Especially those plastic gears were a bit of a pain to paint. But I got it done and this is the way it looks now. As you can see, I left the brown circuit board unpainted as well as the workspace and a couple of other small bits. But everything else is nicely covered and so is the little box. It's all black except the inside. I added some white gesso because I want to give it a little color splash. So I add some red acrylic paint. I also add a little bit to some of the components on that circuit board because they were bright blue and that just didn't sit with me very well. Next I use the rusty set. The first one is dark brown with a bit of a sandy consistency and it gives me a nice starting point. The other two are brown reddish and kind of dark yellow. Now if you don't have this set you can absolutely substitute with acrylic paints. If you want to add texture you can mix in some sand and just experiment until it looks right to you. All right, I think it's time for me to take a little break from chatting with you. I will mainly uh, paint everything and it's all very self-explanatory and anything you need to know will be in the captions. I will also add some unpainted bits and those will also be explained in the caption and I will be back with you in just a wee bit. Enjoy the process.
So the last detailing is with some alcohol ink just to cover up the very new looking and shiny glass pieces and some of the bright metal ones. And then it's really completed and of course I will give you a close up. As you can see I did not change anything on the outside. I like it just the way it is. But of course the door here in the back has the sign that I started with you earlier. It has some script paper and of course my title, the title machine. I love this font. Now ideally this would stand open like this on an open shelf where you could see it from all sides. So now to the details on the inside. Let me prop it up a little bit so we can see it better. So here are the dials on the left side. There's a doorknob and all the details on the table. And all those things got a little bit of the ink as well as the lady. She is the inventor. She is standing at the switchboard at the controls. And she has a pretty red light. And I think this looks so cool. Now I wished I would know how to connect the little switch on the table with a light bulb, but I'm not so good with wires. So the tiny flashlight will have to do. Now you're most likely wondering where is her other half. Well, he is in the time capsule here as part of the time machine and he's going for a long weekend as you can read on the ticket. I think that's so funny. So anyway, she's sending him off either into the past or the future. So there are quite a few red components. I am pointing them out to you. And of course I also have some script paper. There is a big label on the outside. There are those two pamphlets on the table. A tiny piece are added to a tiny frame. Some on the lid. And I also have another title. Now that one is hard to see over there, but you can see those. And of course I named it Time Traveler 2 because I think she has done this before because she did a great job on this machine. <laughs> so let me show you one more time all the moving parts, the light, the bottle top, the spring comes all the way out. We have the door of the time capsule and of course the whole box comes out so I can easily replace the batteries and when it's in it's nice and snug. Here are the moving watch hands. Of course the gears turn even though a bit lazily because of all the paints and I may have to work on those. There's a rotating uh, toy and for last edition I added the jack. The ladder of course will help the fellow escape the time capsule. Now here on the left side, aside from the red wire, which I didn't mention earlier, I also added those two metal pieces, one on the left, one on the right. They have embossed numbers and some writing on them and they're actually dog tags, but I thought they looked a little bit like registration numbers or a certificate of uh, improvement. So here is my time machine. It's done and enough of me. Now to all of your wonderful entries. Here is the lineup. Please take time to look at all the details. All of you did an amazing job. Enjoy.
All right, and now it's time for the July 4 Core Art Challenge. Before I start, I of course want to send a big thank you to all of you who played along. I am so happy to see that you enjoy these monthly art projects and that you send in your entries every month. Even if you only can play along once in a while, we are so happy to have you. If you are new to the 4 Core Challenge, please just go below in my description box and follow the link to my intro video for all the details. Alright, now to this month's challenge. I again picked a theme and I picked bucket list. Now I'm pretty sure you are familiar with this term, but if not, it basically means a list you have maybe even just in your head of things you like to accomplish or do during your lifetime. It could be very simple things that you always wanted to try out, places you always wanted to see. Let's say maybe you want to travel to Paris, that would be a good thing on your bucket list. Or maybe you're more adventurous and you like to jump out of an airplane. So we will all have completely different things on our list and that should make for a nice variety in this month's challenge. So bucket list is a theme and part number two would be our substrate. We will all work two-dimensional for this one even I. <laughs> so you can pick whatever you have handy. Maybe you have some art paper, uh, you like to work on cardboard, this is one of my loose leaf journal pages. You can work in your art journal, maybe canvas board, stretch canvas, and many more substrates are possible. Uh, whatever you have handy, whatever you like to work with. You are of course also free to pick your medium and your style. Uh, mixed media is always fun, but if you prefer to just work in one, like watercolors or pencils, that's great too. Uh, you can work black and white, you can work in color, you can of course use uh, texture paste and stencils and stamps, whatever you like to add uh, to your a page or your canvas. You can absolutely use collage elements, you can combine all different techniques. So that's all up to you, but we will keep it two-dimensional, so no big assemblage type bits and bobs. So that's part number two. Part number three, just going back to the Paris idea, just for an example, would be to add a word, just one word that explains what's on our bucket list to our project. But not just once, but three times. That means it could be in the background, more or less faded. It could be very small and partly hidden. Uh, you could absolutely add it more than three times, but make sure that one time it is big enough and prominent enough so we can read it and we can tell what's on your mind. So let's say it's Paris and you're working somewhat with collage bits and bobs. You could start with the background of craft paper. Even if you do a painting, you can include something like this somewhere as a background. So it has the word Paris uh, right here. Uh, then there are napkins. It has the word Paris here. Uh, stamps. Now this is not real stamps, but maybe you have some real ones. That says Paris. And then here's another little decoration, again with the name uh, Paris. Now you could absolutely also just uh, stamp whatever word you're using. You can write it and just simplify your idea. Let's say you like to jump out of an airplane. Airplane would be the word to use. So one word that explains what's on your bucket list. So that's part number three. And uh, part number four would be to make sure you include a focal point, which most likely is necessary to show us uh, what's on your mind, and that you outline it in black. Whenever you outline something uh, with a black line or a black shadow or black something, it gives it more of an illustrated uh, feel and quality, and it will help us to see better what you're after. And it's also a little bit of a challenge to see how it would feel into your concept. 
So for the outline you can absolutely go big and bold with Sharpies, a big line, a skinny line, any other black pens you may have. Or you can go with something that fades and blends like a Stabilo All or Charcoal. Paint of course would work. There is ink too. This is a watercolor marker which could be blended out with water. You also do not have to use just one continuous line. You could absolutely make dots or small little lines. Uh, anything that indicates a boundary. So that's part number four. So this is a challenge for the month of July. Not too much to explain, but I think the theme of bucket list uh, will hopefully bring in lots and lots of variety of thoughts and ideas and it will be fun for us to know what's on your bucket list. So like always, you have the rest of the months to send your photos to me. Uh, remember, there is four things we all include. Of course, the theme, two-dimensional substrate and medium of your choice. The word that gives away what's on your bucket list at least three times and once big enough where we can read it. A black outline around your focal point in whichever way you see fit. So I'm excited to see what's coming into my email. Uh, please have fun with this challenge. I am thrilled that we have so many entries every month and I can't wait for yours. I will see you really soon again, latest by next Friday. Stay well, stay creative and bye bye for now.